let's look at this uh, numerical on again uh, on joint life uh, annuity computing the single premium for the same now a life insurance company issues an annuity policy to two lives each aged 60 in return for a single premium under the policy an annuity of 10000 per annum is payable annually in advance while at least one of the two lives are alive so when i am talking of at least one of the two lives the annuity payment is primarily 60 60 bar and that too this is happening in advance so probably this is the present value of this annuity calculate the single premium uh, using the equivalence principle so now i know that i have to compute this and if i have to compute this uh, at least one of the lives being alive this would be equivalent to a double dot 60 for uh, the first person plus a double dot 60 for the second person minus a double dot 60 colon 60 which is the joint survival part of it so that would give me the present value right and probably uh, it is uh, clearly said that for the first life i'll take it as a male the second life i'm going to take it as a female and under the four percent and i am using these particular tables all right so i will get it uh, annually itself so no more conversions so i'll take a double dot 60 as a male from that uh, PMA uh, tables itself, A double dot 60 for a male is going to be 15.632. Whereas A double dot 60 in case of a female is going to be 16.652. And we are also talking about the joint status. A double dot 60 colon 60. If I look at as a joint status where the difference is 0, this 60 colon 60 is 14.09 from the table. Now, this will help me to compute the present value of this annuity. This is at least the last survivor until one of them is alive. So the present value of the last survivor annuity for me, last survivor annuity, the present value, the annuity amount of 10,000 is being paid. So I'll say this value plus 16.65 minus 14.309 giving up to 18, uh, 181,940. So, which is uh, very clear that A double dot 60 colon 60 bar for me is nothing but this number divided by 10,000 which is coming out to 18.194. Now, at the same time calculate, so the premium I am very much clear that I have to pay 181,940 for this. Calculate the standard deviation of the net future loss random variable at the outset for this policy. A double dot 60, 60 bar, we already got. A double dot 60 colon 60 bar at 8.16%, we have already got it uh, as 11.957. And probably uh, if I have to compute the variance now, right? Uh, so first of all, the variance of A double dot 60 colon 60 bar. And this is what I have to find out. So the first step is I'll take this as 1 by D times. So, first of all, uh, A colon 
a double dot i can very well express it as uh, i'll try to as express this as 1 minus of 1 minus of d times uh, uh, 1 minus uh, a bar by d right uh, i can uh, very well see the variance of this we remember that it is nothing but 1 by d squared times the variance of a 60 60 bar right this comes out as 1 by d squared times the variance of a 60 60 bar which means i could very clearly bring out that this is 1 by d squared times 2a 60 60 bar minus a 60 60 bar whole squared right now we don't have that 2a 60 60 we have a double dot 60 60 which means i can very well write this as 1 minus of d times a double dot 60 60 bar because we know ax i can very well write it as 1 minus d times a double dot of x the same logic i am applying here 2a and so here when i am taking 2a 60 i am very clearly uh, talking about 1 minus of d times 2a double dot 60 right i am uh, taking up uh, uh, this and similarly uh, i can go with the same uh, logic a 60 60 bar also i can minus directly uh, take it as 1 minus of d times 1 minus of d times a 60 60 bar which we have computed earlier i'll take the square of the same to compute the variance so which means okay if i have to really uh, work out for the variance here i'll simply uh, take these calculation the d part if i require it is i by i by 1 plus i so 4 percent divided by 1.04 this comes out to be my d then i also do as 2 I'll, I want 2a 60 colon 60 bar 2a 60 colon 60 bar if I want I'm writing it as 1 minus of d times a double dot 60 colon 60 bar which is resulting in 1 minus of d times a double dot 60 colon 60 bar at 8.16 percent we already have so i'll take this as the first part being uh, this much the second part a 60 60 bar a also a 60 60 a 60 colon 60 bar I'll uh, directly write it as 1 minus of D times A 60 60 bar. A double dot 60 60 bar. Right. This, this is at the regular interest. Which means 1 minus of D times A 60 60 bar. Uh, A 60 60 bar is something which we have got earlier which is this much so this number i have to take it as the square so this number i'll take it as the square whereas this number yes i have to use not this interest rate but uh, the d i have to use it as eight percent divided by 1.08 so which will give me these two numbers so the variance now will come out as first of all 10,000 squared 
multiplied by the difference between expected value of x squared minus expected value of x whole squared divided by d squared. When I'm doing this, I'm getting this to be the variance, which means I can very well work out on the standard deviation, which is going nothing but the square root of this variance working out to somewhere around 40,000. Let me see where I have made a whether I have made any kind of a mistake here. Okay, this is the D. 1 minus of 8% by 1.08 multiplied by this. Expected value of X is X squared is this much. Then I am looking at expected value of X whole squared. 1 minus of 0 0.038 times 0.038 times oh here did I do by squared okay Right, uh, let's uh, so this is what is working out as the standard deviation in the entire process. So, any calculation issues you can really work it out, but this is what is the typical computation that comes in for uh, a joint life annuity. If I am interested in finding out the premium as well as the standard deviation. All right.